All right. Hello and welcome to another LegView Partners web webinar, everyone. We've had a lot of them this October and see some familiar names popping up on the screen. So it's nice to see you back and for you newbies equally. So I'm excited to get things started and help you learn a little bit more about leveraging lead scoring to drive results. I'm Julia Flaherty, the Marketing Coordinator at LegeView Partners. We are a business and technology consulting company who partners with organizations to transform sales, marketing, and customer service operations and processes that are supported by core technologies, including customer relationship management, CRM, and marketing automation. Our certified experts provide strategic business advice, process definition, and technology solutions that advance your business processes forward, helping you to achieve your unique business goals in sales, marketing, customer service, and CRM. We're glad to have you here today, and as usual, we have a full agenda for you. But before we can dive in, I just have a few quick housekeeping notes to cover, so bear with me here as I go over them with you. We will be taking up about 45 minutes of your time today. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand after the live session. All attendees will receive a follow-up email after the webinar is complete with a link to access the presentation. If you haven't already, please add at letsviewpartners.com to your safe senders list to ensure you get the email. Or if you find any emails from us in your spam folder, please mark them as not spam. We encourage you to share the link you received today within your company and professional networks. To ensure the best audio quality, we have everyone on listen-only mode, but if you have a question or comment, please submit those in the question pane of your GoToWebinar control panel. We will follow up with you afterwards. We at LegeView have a lot of excellent resources to offer you when you're interested in learning more about our comprehensive services in customer service, sales, marketing, and CRM technology from a variety of ebooks to infographics to blogs to videos and more. We have over 25 ebooks in our current library and hundreds of blogs for you to take advantage of to help you build your own knowledge base, get more insight, and develop your expertise. So after this webinar, you can go and check all that out at LegeViewPartners.com. All right. Now that that's out of the way, it is time to introduce Chad Collette, the Director of Marketing here at LegeView, who just got back from the CRMUG User Group Summit with a ton of great takeaways from attendees like some of you. Chad is a dynamo at market, marketing operations and processes, whether it be with developing nurture campaigns, executing marketing strategies, managing social media budgets and planning, trade show projects, awesome webinars like this, and much more. He really does it all. Plus, through all of his work, he still manages to find time to run marathons. And now that you know a little more about him, I'll hand it over to him and let him get things started. Thank you, Julia, for that warm introduction. Uh, Dynamo, wow. I appreciate everyone talk, taking the time today to attend and talk about lead scoring. On the screen, you can see my contact details and I'll be showing them again at the end, but when it comes to marketing, I'm always happy to make a new connection and discuss any marketing topic, including lead scoring. So feel free to connect with me on social and you can see both my LinkedIn and Twitter handles there. As Julia mentioned, I had the privilege of attending and speaking at the CRMUG and Microsoft Dynamics 365 Summit in Phoenix this month. For those of you unfamiliar with that event, it's the flagship annual user conference for Microsoft Dynamics users, including CRM, Dynamics 365, GPAX, and more. For anyone on the webinar that doesn't use Dynamics, don't worry, this presentation is not specific to that platform or really any solution for that matter. I, I do mention several technology solutions, but the ideas, the tips, the processes I'm gonna talk about today are transferable to many solutions. Personally, I have experience with both Microsoft Dynamics 365 and CRM, as well as Salesforce from a CRM perspective. And I hold certifications in marketing automation solutions, including Acton and Click Dimensions. But I've also dabbled with HubSpot, Pardot, and Marketo as well. I guess I just can't get enough uh, CRM and marketing automation. So let's get into it. At Summarize, some, uh, Summit, I did a poll that I wanna launch here and uh, would love to have everybody's input on what you do. So 
Let's see if our virtual audience compares to the live audience I had in Phoenix. You should see a poll coming up on your screen, and I want to see how our audience is kind of currently situated when it comes to lead scoring. Let us know if you have a current automated process in place and are just looking for a few nuggets to take you over the hump. Or are you stuck with a broken or manual process right now? Or is your lead scoring something that you just kind of started to work on, but you haven't really launched or simply it's on your wish list? So let's kind of take a look. Uh, so we've got nobody has an automated system. We got uh, a couple of folks that uh, kind of a manual process and needs a little work and almost 90% of everybody uh, is uh, working on it or kind of dreaming of it. So we're going to give it and we're going to shut down that poll. Thank you very much for everybody that, uh, that participated. So that really is the same um, kind of percentages that we had in, in Phoenix as well. The majority of the folks in those rooms were checking out lead scoring because it's what they were working on, what they were really dreaming about doing. And, you know, it's on par with what we saw. So, in fact, you know, that makes sense because only 21% of B2B marketers actually have an established lead scoring program. So everybody in this room, you're right on, you're right on track. And for those that do have an automation program in place, they see a 192% higher average lead qualification rate, which tells you the importance that lead scoring has and that sales and marketing table. But of course, you know that you wouldn't be investing your time here in the webinar. Speaking of sales and marketing, many times it comes down to sales versus marketing in a constant battle. Marketing claiming they are providing solid leads and wondering why sales doesn't follow up. And the flip side that sales believes that all the leads from marketing are simply junk, so they are not going to waste their time. It seems to be an age old dispute, but yet a very common one. So who's right? With less than 25% of new leads being sales ready, the blame falls to both departments really. Marketing may have found a great lead, but maybe they're just not ready to talk to sales. And without sales following up, they are very likely to miss out on a golden opportunity in the future. Taking a look internally at your own organization, do any of these sound familiar? Does sales let you know when a lead is simply not ready to buy? How about that the lead passed to them is not the decision maker? Or how often have you heard or even possibly said that marketing doesn't know what a good lead is? To remove these barriers, it's important to not look at it as marketing versus sales, but instead create an alignment between these two teams who are working towards a common goal. So where do you start? Sales biggest issue is often the quality of the leads coming in. And this stat confirms it with 70% saying improving lead quality is the most important objective in their lead generation strategy. So how do we actually improve lead scoring? Well, it's kind of a no brainer with today's topic, but yeah, you guessed it, it's lead scoring. Here's a politically correct definition of lead scoring where we, it's creating a methodology for ranking leads to determine their sales readiness. From a marketing perspective, it's just a point-based system that will give your sales team quality, sales-ready leads so they stop complaining and blaming marketing. I think my fellow marketers in the call will agree. When I presented this uh, presentation at Summit Conference, I had about 90% marketers in the room, so I know um, you can see how they reacted, and they all definitely agreed with me on that one. Hashtag kind of no excuses. Often, as I said, Sales and marketing are not on the same page when it comes to leads. And instead of talking to each other, there are a lot of myths out there that exist. Now, some of these seem obviously not true, but it's a good idea to debunk them from the start, such as any lead is a good lead. I believe we all know this isn't the case. Think about how many times you get asked, how many leads do you have versus how many sales ready leads or marketing qualified leads do you have? How about that your sales team is the best resource you can use to gauge if a lead is a good fit? Are they a good resource? Absolutely. 
but not necessarily the best resource. Responses can and will vary depending on who from sales you speak with. While using just explicit or demographic data as your primary criteria for lead quality is listed as a myth, I feel that many companies don't consider using behavioral or engagement data, which is also known as implicit scoring due to maybe lack of resources, and the same can be said for only generating quality leads from in-house lead generation. There are many options for finding and qualifying leads, and organizations should keep an open mind. In fact, if you don't have the resources available in-house, it is a good idea to explore the option of utilizing a third party to supplement your lead gen efforts. So now that we hit on a few myths, here's a couple of examples of what lead scoring is not. And with this first one, it hits on our early theme today of sales and marketing alignment. Lead scoring cannot be a standalone process or created in a silo. If you do that, sales won't understand it, and they may use it as a way to cherry pick hot leads, which is not how lead scoring is intended to function. So quiz time again. How do you know if you need to implement a lead scoring system at your company? Ask yourself, is my sales team getting enough leads? And I mean marketing qualified, sales ready leads. Does your sales team call the leads you send them? Do you even know if your sales team follows up? I know many companies that do not know the answer to that question. Do you currently have enough data or access to the right data to develop a lead scoring program, such as demographic or firmographic data, or the ability to track engagement and behavioral activities? And if your sales team does follow up on leads, do they know when to follow up on leads? We all know. Many times in sales, timing is everything, and it can be very critical. Now, if you're on the fence about lead scoring, which I doubt you are, or else you wouldn't have logged, in, logged off by now, let's take it a step further. Here we are, back at sales and marketing alignment. You might be getting tired of me bringing this up, but it is a theme. We are going to get into the nuts and bolts of lead scoring very shortly but you can't look past the benefits it creates by aligning these two departments that sometimes are one and the same yet still fractured. With a properly executed lead scoring system, unqualified leads won't have a negative pull on sales productivity and will allow your sales team to focus on the best leads at the right time. And the expectations of follow-up marketing has with sales will be outlined. No more guessing games what a qualified lead looks like or how and when, or even if sales will follow up. A lead scoring system can be the foundation for the service level agreement between marketing and sales. While lead scoring creates alignment for each department and brings them together, how these teams use lead scoring can differ. From a marketing perspective, marketers love lead scoring because it allows them to effectively measure how their marketing is doing it as it pertains to quality of leads. It provides timely, relevant information to improve lead nurturing and allow for deeper personalization. And it really helps marketers analyze if buyers are resonating with their content and following the buyer's journey they've mapped out. Now on the flip side, sales are happy campers because they can identify sales qualified leads much faster and with more confidence. This allows them to more efficiently utilize their time by prioritizing leads, which will build a more accurate forecast and ultimately grow their sales pipeline. So where do we sign up, right? Well, let's talk about how you can get started with lead scoring. We start with the basics. While you can score leads on really any countless number of criteria, they really fall into a couple of buckets. Explicit, which is also known as demographic lead scoring, and implicit scoring, which focuses on the behavior and the engagement. Think of the explicit model as how interested you are in them. Do they fit your buyer or company persona as your target customer? And flipping the coin over from an implicit angle, how interested in they are they in you? Are they engaging with your marketing efforts? 
Now, in order to ensure you're not pursuing someone who is not your target buyer, it is necessary, it's a necessary exercise to build your buyer's profile. And keep in mind, you may have several buyer profiles. They may differ by product or by services that you offer. The best way to determine this is to work with your sales and marketing teams to develop your buyer profiles. Take a spreadsheet and create six columns. You get your background, demographics, your goals, wants, needs, and challenges. How does your our product or service help them? What are the common objections we hear? And finally, how are we positioning our product or service to this buyer? This is an exercise you can do as a group, but even better, have each key team member complete it and see what you get back. You're gonna be amazed. Creating this buyer profile will help you develop your explicit scoring model based on demographic and firmographic data and hone in on your ideal target buyer. What does that buyer look like in terms of a job title? their role or the department they work in? How about the company size or their industry? Although these are all characteristics of your target buyer, as we develop our explicit scoring, you have three subcategories you can consider, individual, company, and relationship. From an individual perspective, who are they? What is their ideal title? Such as like a VP or director of sales of marketing or operations. Perhaps they have a specialty or a certification that you can hone in on. What type of email did they use to sign up? Was it a business email or a personal account? Are they active on social? Evaluate what your ideal company customer looks like. Are they typically SMBs, mid-market or enterprise? Do you judge that based on number of employees, annual revenue, or perhaps their financial rank? You may have focus regions that you target, so location, including city, state, or country, can be extremely important. From a relationship standpoint, when they enter your CRM and your marketing automation, and you start to track and score them, you want to know if they are a current customer. This may cause you to develop different scoring to not only maintain, but grow that customer. Are they a prospect or a lead? How about a competitor who downloaded some of your content and is gathering intel? Or perhaps a former customer who still sees value in your customer and could be eyeing up a re-engagement. You could see there are several areas using demographic data to classify and prioritize your ideal buyers. As we talk about lead scoring, we instinctively think about lead scores that continue to go up and up. But you can also utilize lead scoring to keep the wrong leads off the radar of your sales team and prevent those from creating inefficiencies and mistrust with sales. You can use negative lead scoring with company names, industries, or job titles, like say like a student. As marketers, we've all seen forms come across with gibberish for names. Well, we know those are not serious buyers, and if non-business emails are utilized, again, depending on your business, could mean that they are not in the buying mode, but simply researching or trying to remain anonymous. Here's a quick shot of how it could all come together. Your explicit scoring will be much, much longer than this, but I wanted to show you how it may look and how you can use different levels of scoring. Perhaps your target buyer is a VP or a director, but managers from time to time are the decision makers or perhaps key influencers. So while not your ideal buyer, we do give them a score, say like 12 for the VP or the director and a six for the manager. Now, your lead scoring system could be 1 to 50 or even 1 to 1,000. It's really all up to you. So these numbers are, are completely your call. Switching gears, it's time to move over to the implicit scoring model. How marketers identify how engaged the lead, the prospect, or the customer is with you in your marketing and in your content. Similar in nature to explicit, there are a number of actions you can score against. Now, I've listed a few of the more common ones that marketers utilize, but this list is only a sampling, and you can get very specific. Are they visiting your landing and web pages? Are they reading or, better yet, subscribing to your blog? Are they downloading your ebooks, white papers, your data sheets? 
Are they watching your online demos or your videos? Or perhaps following you on social media or attending your live events? I mean, the list can really go on and on. And keep in mind that there are so many ways to score a single line item. Web pages, forms, landing pages. Did they visit them? Or did they engage in any action while they were on them? Did they visit multiple times? If you host webinars, did they register and not attend? And yes, I'm very guilty of doing that thanks to on-demand content. But if they attended like you folks are doing right now, and actually dedicated 30, 45, or even 60 minutes of your precious time, that should be scored differently. Going to a demo page on your website can be scored differently than if they visit your About Us page. And yes, you can and should implement negative scoring for engagement as well. If they unsubscribed, maybe they issued a spam complaint or they haven't had any activity in a long period of time, they are likely not a marketing qualified lead. And you don't want to pass that over to sales to spend time contacting. It's important to help marketers identify them and keep them out of that sales funnel. You can also take this many steps further and have different scoring based on products and services that are perhaps key to your business or part of a special campaign. Depending on the marketing automation solution you utilize, you may be able to take advantage of account-based marketing and scoring. This gives you the ability to see a cumulative score for everyone at a specific company, even if they're involved in different departments, perhaps seeking multiple products or service offerings from you. Now, I mentioned the score degradation over time. If they disengage with you, is it due to lack of marketing or maybe a lack of interest? And to keep your alignment intact, continually review your lead scoring with both sales and marketing. It's highly unlikely you'll be able to identify a marketing qualified or sales ready lead right out of the chute, so refinement will be in order. But be open and honest in those conversations and it'll benefit everyone involved. Speaking of alignment, again, it's time to break out those spreadsheets. You can create your engagement triggers, and I've listed a few here and assigned a score. If you send someone an email, does that really warrant a lead score? Not my opinion. How about opening it? Now that might be a point in my book, and actually we do use one point for opening an email. And we also do this so we can easily report on who has no engagement, even a simple action such as opening an email. And as the action grows stronger or requires more effort, the point should grow as well. Consider your buyer's journey. Taking just a dozen options, here's what your scoring may look like. Less points for minimal action and greater points for focused engagement. Completing a form, spending time on a webinar, going from a standalone landing page to your website to learn more, perhaps filling out that form on the web page. While knowing who our target buyer is, is important, for sales to strike when the iron's hot, we need to know if and when they are engaging with our content. From an implicit method, 68% of successful marketers cite lead scoring based on content and engagement as most responsible for improving revenue contribution. And we love to know that the content that we create is ultimately creating opportunities. And with your content, how deep did they go? How many times have you downloaded an ebook, you saved it, and then never actually reviewed it? Or you gave it a quick once over but forgot to go back? If you place calls to action in the content, you can gauge how deep they go. Did they simply like your page or your email, or did they actually forward it to a friend and recommend it? As your lead or prospect, or even your customers, move through the buyer's journey, they will continue to engage. They'll continue to increase their scores and get closer to being a marketing qualified and sales ready lead and prospect. As I mentioned earlier, you can use your scoring however you wish, but thinking in terms of your simple funnel, when you're building your awareness or your top of the funnel, what does that look like, both in terms of content and scoring? Have they clicked around and shown some interest and moved to the middle of the funnel? That's when you show what it's like to work with you and engage deeper. 
growing that lead score and pushing them to the bottom, bottom of the funnel. We've talked a lot about features of lead scoring. If you are without a, a true marketing automation solution and only with the CRM, some of this functionality won't be available or you'll need to have a really good relationship with your CRM admin or developer to, to make them happen. If you have a marketing automation solution or plan to get one, I mean the world is your oyster. Keep in mind though that not all marketing automation solutions are built alike or have the same functionality. They may offer lead scoring, but there are many nuances to this component as well. So you wanna make sure you do your due diligence. Do they offer multiple scoring options? Do they offer implicit and explicit? We suggest talking to your CRM partner. Beyond anything, integrating your marketing automation solution with your CRM is critical in my opinion. You lose so much visibility with separate systems and cannot take advantage of the strengths of each system. There are lots and lots of options, so you don't have to settle. Now, no solution will give you 100% of what you want, but with many of these, you can get really close. We talked a lot of concept today. You know lead scoring is a good idea, but what's next? What are my action items? Well, there's really no cookie cutter approach to it. First up, do you have marketing automation software? If not, that is your step one. If you do, is it connected to your CRM? If you have a current scoring system with which most people on this call do not, was it built in a silo? And don't feel bad if it was, because most are. That may also answer your question if it is effective or why it's not effective. Is there low user adoption for the system? And from there, can you determine if you want to just tweak what you have or toss in the white towel and kind of start over? As you continue to do inventory, take stock in your company and your buyer's profile. Do you have a buyer's profile? On paper, I mean, not just in your head. We all may know who our buyer is, but do we have that written down? And if we do, is it current? Same story goes with your buyer's journey. Is it documented? Is it current? Does it match all the products and solutions you're marketing or does it have gaps? You're gonna to wanna to connect with sales management. Give them a full briefing. A good idea may be for them to also watch this webinar on demand. Get them on board. It is the only way it will all work. And if you're in sales, these are all the tasks you need to get marketing on board with. Building your game plan. It's not a one and done experience. That may be why the old scoring system didn't work before. Multiple touch points are so important. Everyone is busy and you may encounter pushback, but don't resort back to your silo. As marketing and sales connect in a joint effort, discuss the buyer profiles and the buyer's journeys. Do you need more content? Do you have the resources or budget to create that content? How will that affect the timetable? Get your spreadsheets together that we talked about earlier <clears throat> and dive into the fun world of explicit and implicit scoring. Hash out what's important based on those buyer profiles and that journey you want to put them down. Depending on the marketing automation solution you are using, sales may have limited visibility into marketing information. However, if your marketing automation solution is connected to your CRM, by adding a few fields and views, you can really give sales access to a lot of information that will be so helpful. Things like seeing behavior scores or funnel stages on the lead record and having views created to easily sort and see which leads are hot and ready for sales to engage. Some marketing automation solutions have native integrations with CRM and others a connector. But either way, you will want to ensure that sales can get a 360 degree view of the engagement that your leads and your contacts have with you, including things like page views, email opens, clicks, media views, which include videos and eBooks and white papers and data sheets. Are they sharing your content and more? 
knowing what they engage with and when they engage with it is a great tool for sales to utilize when following up on leads and contacts. As you determine what sales needs, don't guess, ask. I'm not saying you have to say yes to every single field and every view and every workflow. That may not even be your call to make, but ask them what will be valuable to them. Is it the ability to see hot leads by score, by date, by rep, by territory, et cetera? How about notifications if a customer, a prospect, or a lead completes a form like downloading an ebook or signing up for an event? Or building workflow email notifications when they reach a score threshold? Keeping that lead, that contact, top of mind to sales when we are top of mind to them. I know this is one of our sales team's favorite features that we implemented between our marketing automation and CRM. I know you're getting excited, but you're gonna to wanna to consult with your CRM admin from the start. Springing it on them that you need five new workflows and eight new fields by the end of the week will never go over well. Improvements and enhancements may take time depending on your resources. And if you have an internal approval process for CRM enhancements, how does that affect your launch date? I know some of these approval processes can take quite a long time potentially. When you've pulled it all together, and your CRM admin has done you a huge favor and moved your request to the top of the list and knocked them all out. It's time to train sales and roll it out. Then guess what? Sales will forget. So to make sure to offer multiple trainings and frequent reminders that this is a system you'll be using and it's so advantageous. Sales is always looking for the next opportunity so they can easily forget new processes but if you stay on them, it'll create that alignment that we continue to bring up again and again. And just when you think things are done, you're not. Make sure you set target dates to review the scoring. Does it match up with what you anticipated? Do adjustments need to be made? Now, don't change things right away. Make sure you give it time to allow for enough data to make an educated decision. And use CRM to track your successes and your struggles. Don't be ashamed if you fall, just get back up. Sharing your results will help you process, will help this new process kind of become a way of life. And I think, you know, after all this information, it's really no surprise that those using lead scoring had a 77% boost in lead generation and return on investment over those who did not. With a properly implemented and well executed lead scoring system, you can measure the increased conversion rates for marketing qualified leads to your opportunities. You'll see an increase in sales productivity and a decrease in the sales cycle as leads that are sales ready when they hit the sales desk. And the alignment built between marketing and sales is, it's simply priceless and will provide returns over and over again for your company. If, so if you're looking for additional information on marketing automation, lead scoring specifically, or any marketing and sales in, related info, we have a number of assets at ledgypartners.com. And I have been on many of the marketing automation providers' websites, and it is stacked with content galore. Ledgy is a partner with both Click Dimensions and Acton. And as I said, I am personally certified in both. So if you have any questions regarding these platforms, I'm happy to engage with you. I want to thank you for taking the time of your busy day to hear me kind of ramble on about lead scoring and hopefully you walked away smarter for the time you invested. And here's my contact details again, and I hope you'll consider connecting. Julie, I'm going to turn it back over to you and you can wrap things up. All right. Well, thank you for all of that great information, Chad. I always love to hear about what's new with marketing automation technology and get more insight into key strategies. This webinar really did serve as a fantastic reminder about what we can all do to develop more effective programs. If you missed it in my intro today, we did record today's presentation and we'll be sending all of you a link to access this webinar on demand. You can share that within your professional networks and that email will be coming from Ledgeview Partners. So once again, be sure to add at ledgeviewpartners.com to your safe senders list so you have no trouble receiving that. With any questions you may have, you can reach out to Chad directly or via email at contactus at ledgeviewpartners.com. 
We invite you to join our Facebook group for marketers. We have our marketing experts group, and you can find us when you search facebook.com slash Partners. click on our groups tab, and then request to join marketing experts. You can also check out more of our upcoming webinars at ledgeviewpartners.com and register for those. And with that all in mind, I will wrap things up today and let you get back to your day here. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you have a spectacular weekend.